joined today by Michelle Park, senior golfer on the women's team. Michelle, thanks for coming by. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, top 10 finish, you finished tied for second at the tournament in Washington. None of us know how to actually say this tournament name, so we're just going to call it the tournament at Sahali <laughs> yeah, uh, for, for Washington <laughs> fans who, are, who could be listening. Sorry, we never got the name pronunciation. But Michelle, talk about the tournament and, you know, how that all played out for you. Yeah, um, well, it was actually a really good tournament for me, and it was our second tournament of the season. And so um, going in, I was a bit nervous, I guess, just because I didn't know how I was going to play. But it ended up being an 18-18-18 three-day mm -hmm. instead of a usual 36-18. So I was actually just telling myself to take it easy, and I had three days to just um, take it slow rather than going straight into 36-18. And so um, we actually played our practice round, and the course was really difficult just because the fairways are really narrow and so that was kind of nerve-wracking at first because I was like oh no like what if I don't hit it like right less room to miss so. yeah and so I was kind of panicking but I think you just get used to it and I was just telling myself um just one shot at a time and so that course just one hole can really screw you up so it was just really important to stay in the present and not think about the future so I think that's what I was able to do and so I was able to you know, play well there, so it was good. Is there more pressure for you when it's a 36-18? Is that harder for a golfer as, as opposed to when it's stretched out, like you said, eight, uh, three 18s? Yeah. Um, I think for me personally, it's hard mentally just because we're gone the whole day. And so if 36, we'll probably be there, at, wake up at 5 and get out, probably at, like get back into bed probably 8 p.m. And so just playing golf maybe 10 to 12 hours straight is really like mentally hard. And so... I think that's just the hard part, and physically too. You know, we're carrying our bags, we're walking everything. We don't have push carts, or or we don't have um, the right to ride the, the carts. So, yeah, I think that's harder. But um, I think it's just you have to prepare before you go in. That like you prepare your game, like your mental mm -hmm. game, and so yeah. Um, is that an NCAA rule, no carts, or is that um, tournament no, to tournament? It's not. Some some courses where it's hard to walk, we'll get to drive a cart. But usually we don't. They usually make us walk. So, well, it was a tough field. Six teams were in the top 50 in the nation. Uh, who did you play with? Uh, which teams did you play with? And you know, did it change every day? And it did change. I think the first day we played with Fresno, and I can't remember. But it wasn't the top school, top ring schools. And then the second and third day, we were able to play with the top ring schools because we were playing well. And so. It was really good because it get to it showed us that you know we have the game to compete at that level, and so it was really I guess motivating to continue to you know practice so that we can play better throughout the season. Um, now you're off to Hawaii. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Anyone else want to go to Hawaii? I'd love to go to Hawaii. <laughs> Alex wants to go to Hawaii. Coach Brooks, um, if you have room on your in your entourage, <laughs> yes. Alex and I are available. Um, have you played there before? I haven't. Um, not. What do, you, what do you know about the course? I know nothing about the course, actually. <laughs> we, I've never heard of it, so we'll see when we get there. Um, what are the strengths of your game? Um, I guess my strength would be probably my iron shots. I don't usually miss much. I'll probably just be fair away on the green, and so that would just be probably my biggest strength. And what, what are, what's your, your vulnerabilities? What areas of your game are you wanting to work on this yeah. year? Um, my short game probably mostly my putting just because I have a lot of chances at birdie and so just um, I've been really working on my putting and chipping as well with coaches so it's have it's you, getting better have you seen a big improvement from last year to this year on your um, short game yeah I have I think just because I've been trying different shots now and so just um, before I would just be sticking to one kind of shot but now with coach and stuff I'm trying to work on different type of shots so it's been helping uh, do you work with Jane Chin, who is the assistant coach? Uh, right now, no, just um, because she hasn't really been able to come up because she's working too. But um, we have Megan, a new assistant, and so she's been helping a lot. And she's a good, um, she's good for our team, so it's been good. What has Megan brought to the team? I think, uh, well, she's studying sports psychology, and mm -hmm. so in the beginning of the year, we took like a personality test, which helped because 
we got to see um, who who goes well with each other, like the teammates wise and stuff. And so that was good. And I think she's just really positive impact. She's always there in the morning to help us and always there when we need um, you know help. And she knows a lot of golf knowledge too. And so it's been helpful just to have her around. Um, you got to do something pretty you know unusual yeah. last <laughs> summer. You went on an Asia tour. Mm -hmm. um, who did you go with? You know which countries did you hit? Talk about that. Yeah. Um, well, there was nine of us from different Division One schools all over the world, and so, or not all over the country, <laughs> and so. Um, but you went all over the world. <laughs> yeah, so we went to Japan first, Korea, and then Hong Kong, and it was really just um, kind of for fun, I guess. But you go out there and you play with. Um, in Japan, we were in like the military base, and so we kind of helped them raise money to build a softball field or something. And so we just played like exhibition tournaments and just it was more having fun with each other and just seeing, you know, culture outside of America as well as the golf courses out there. So did you play with any of the members of the military or was it just just your group? Oh, no, we did. Um, the first the first tournament we actually played there was with the military. So we were able to play with um, military men stationed out there in Japan. And so they shared with us their experience and it was really cool to just see that. That had to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It was really fun and I'd I, be intimidated actually playing with against <laughs> military people. Yeah, no, they're, they're really nice and they loved golf so just constantly talking about golf and it was just really fun just playing with them. How was their knowledge? Were they um, pretty knowledgeable or were they were they just picking your birds? They're, they're just fun. They're just having fun but they were they knew a lot of um about golf and stuff so they would always ask me like about this golfer and so it was really cool um and you also went to korea yeah and what I was did. korea like it was it was good it, we weren't there for too long and it was busy there just because we were there for i think like four days and we played golf like three out of those four days but it was really cool so um the golf courses there are, were much nicer and so we had caddies and cards and everything so it was really nice. I have to, I have to ask, did you go to Gangnam? Yes we did. You did, <laughs> we really? did. So yes fans, Gangnam <laughs> is an actual place in South Korea. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> we did go there. What is Gangnam like? It's it's like the Beverly Hills of Korea. I think okay but is it really Beverly Hills? Is it Beverly Hills? It's it's yeah it no it's really nice. It's like the nicer area and mm -hmm. so we were there a lot. We were well because we were um, li like staying at the hotel near Gangnam, and uh -huh. so we would drive by Gangnam, and there's all these nice cars, and so all the girls are saying like, "Oh, Korea is so much better than Japan," just because you know everything was nice. But I was like, "No, this is like the rich neighborhood." But it is it is where all the uh, you know high end stuff are. So, and you actually went before the song came out. So <laughs> you, you know, little did we know that you were actually going to go to the place. <laughs> um, and Hong Kong. What's Hong Kong like? It. Hong Kong was actually really neat. It was one of my favorite places just because I've never been there. And it really was kind of like East meets West because they're Asian, but they also have uh, Western culture there too. And English was also one of their first, ling like one of their national languages. So so they have the most Western influence. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was just easier to communicate there too. And so all of us were just relieved by the time we got to Hong Kong because it was like, okay, we can communicate now. And so wait, you don't speak Korean? I do, but... But were you the only one? Yeah, I was the only one. Uh, so, so the girls the were having a trouble time. Yeah, uh, but in Hong Kong, it was just a lot more relief, like, feeling. Did anyone speak Japanese? Were you able to get around in Japan, or was that difficult? No, it, there's actually a funny story in Japan that I'll tell you, but um, none of them really speak English. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one, of the day, one of the nights, we, uh, we actually went out to go eat dinner because we had free time, and we stayed at... Um, at Camp Zama, which is the military base, and so we went to the nearest restaurant, which is right next door, and we thought they would speak English, but they ha they couldn't speak anything at all, and so we were trying to order food, and we are trying to order water, and so we were like, oh, can we have water, and he didn't understand me, and so we were just like, okay, we'll just get Coke, Coca-Cola, and uh -huh. then one of the girls really wanted water, and so she was trying to... Um, order it like she was just doing all these hand movements like water and you know and then eventually she brought out a water bottle and then he was like oh like water because their their pronunciation is really like 
it's, right there's no r yeah and right. so we were just like laughing and so it was just a fun like a fun time trying to order food and it was just something different a little cultural so, exchange yeah right? like i thought it would be easier for me just because i am asian but it was still hard I and mean, it was hard to understand with like they can understand me too so was there uh a lot for a lot of the girls was it their first time in asia yeah it was it was um there was only two well one of the other girls was from thailand so mm -hmm. Her and me were the only Asians, and everyone else, it was their first time, so it was a wow. good experience for them. What was their impression of Asia? Do you remember? They, <laughs> no, they, I mean... There had to be a lot of adjustment for them. Yeah, I think they enjoyed it a lot, and they were saying how this is so different than what America is like, because a lot of them actually haven't been out of the country, mm -hmm. and so they just really enjoyed their experience, and we just had a good group of girls that just got along, so it just made the trip even better. How did that trip kind of get you ready for this year because mm -hmm. honestly you know, I've known you for a couple years yeah. now and you definitely came back and there's a change you were mm -hmm. a bit more mature a bit more <laughs> comfortable and confident uh -huh. um is yeah. that true would you agree with that yeah no I I do I think just I was able to play so much golf over the summer and I was actually enjoying my time so when it got back I was actually more motivated to you know keep going and keep practicing and so it I think it helps to just it's my senior year, and so I want to make it a good year, and it's it's just been very comfortable for for me. So, um, really quickly, I'm going to talk about you guys. Your team has mm -hmm. this unusual quirk. Mm -hmm. You f go out and find snails and name them Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> and yes, I've been talking to your teammates, and that's where I got the information. But yes, you guys go uh -huh. out and find snails and name them Gary. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I actually don't know how that started, but I think maybe my sophomore year was Tara and Ronnie and me, we were playing a practice round or something, and there just happened to be a lot of snails, and someone just started calling it Gary, and so from I now... I that's from Spongebob, right? Yeah, yep. Spongebob, and so from now on, whenever we see a snail in the morning, we're just like, oh, Gary, and we just, yeah, it's just a little fun thing, I guess, in the morning. Do you all do it now, or is it still just the three of you? I think just, well, now we've kind of, um, the Lucy, the freshman, has actually caught on to, and so, yeah, I think it's getting on to everyone, but, yeah. Um, you know, really quickly, let's just, you know, you touched on Lucy Ann, who's mm -hmm. new this year, and mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about Lucy Ann and Brenna, mm -hmm. and um, how good do you think they're going to be for UC Irvine Golf in the future? Oh, definitely really good. Um, they just have so much potential, both of them, and they're just um, really hard workers too, and definitely right now they're just upper um, underclassmen, but they're playing really well too. So definitely a lot of potential within them the next two years. Well, Michelle, you guys have um, Hawaii coming up, and then you're on break, at, but you have the entire spring schedule. Yeah. Um, going for a Big West title, who's your biggest competition this year? Uh, right now would be UC Davis. They're think ranked top five in the country and so we actually just played with them at um, Sahali the Washington tournament and so um, they'll probably be our biggest competition but and that's know, been a rivalry for a couple of years yeah, you it, guys have been head to head it has it has but um, yeah there's definitely potential this year and you know just playing with them also last week helped us to see you know how good they are and so hopefully that motivates us to, you know, continue working hard. But they also got to see how good you guys are. Yeah, that's yeah. true. They did. <laughs> so they, see that so they might be a little intimidated, <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. Um, well, you know, good luck this spring. You know, we love Julie Brooks. <laughs> we love Jane. We love Megan. We love all you guys. Um, best of luck to you, and we really hope that you have a great spring season. Okay, thank you. Thanks. That was Michelle Park. We'll be right back for a quick update on women and men's soccer. We'll be right back on the Blue and Gold Report.